Hello everybody, Dr. Carl here. At the beginning of this semester, I want to take a minute and go over two really important topics, and those are uh, academic honesty and plagiarism. Now, all of this information is in the syllabus, but I'm not really convinced anybody reads the syllabus anyway, so I want to go over this together. And there's really three reasons that I want to cover this in a little bit of detail. First is that this is a really important topic, not only for your college classes, but also for your career. And second, there are some aspects of how we define academic honesty and plagiarism that are, that are potentially confusing, and I want to make sure that we're all on the same page. And third is, unfortunately, that I have to deal with this almost every semester, and uh, I'm really hoping that by having a bit of a discussion about this now, we can avoid some problems down the road. There's a group called the Council of Writing Program Administrators. Yeah, that's really a thing. I bet their holiday parties are just a riot. But they define plagiarism as deliberately using someone else's ideas or uh, language or other original material without acknowledging its source. Now, where this gets murky is figuring out what actually is plagiarism. And the key is the intent, whether or not the, the purpose was deliberate in using someone else's work and then not acknowledging them. So plagiarism is passing off somebody else's ideas as your own or taking credit for someone else's work, or blurring the lines between what is somebody else's work and what is your own. Um, all of that constitutes plagiarism, and that's not cool, like not at all, period. So if you're caught plagiarizing in a class, that's a pretty serious offense, and at a minimum, you'll get a zero on an assignment. I do have to alert the uh, Dean of Academics for the College of Natural Resources and the Dean of Students at the university, and they keep track of these things so that they can tell whether or not there's a pattern of plagiarism with student. And if they determine that there is a pattern, then you could possibly fail a course or be expelled from the university. And if these consequences seem harsh, it's because they are. It's because the plagiarism is a big deal. Here's the thing, though. In your career, the consequences of plagiarism could be a whole lot worse than getting a zero on an assignment. Uh, for me, if I were caught plagiarizing something, either in a report or a paper or a grant proposal, uh, I could likely lose my job and very likely never get another one in, in academia again. Okay, so now that I've scared everybody to death, uh, let me clarify something. So not citing someone else's work or ideas because you were careless or you didn't know how to or you didn't think that you needed to, that's not plagiarism, okay? That's called misuse of sources. It's still not okay, but it doesn't rise to the same level of seriousness of deliberately citing or deliberately using someone else's work and not citing it. Part of your undergraduate and graduate education is learning how to write, and this includes when you need to cite sources and how you cite them. And I'm more than happy to help and provide feedback and suggestions to you uh, when you're not confident in, in citing sources. And so as long as I think that you're putting in effort in your writing and in your assignments and documenting your sources to the best of your knowledge and ability, then I'm not gonna penalize you for, for misuse of sources. In this course, we're going to cover some basic information on vegetation measurements and monitoring, stuff that you really just need to know. But what I'm really interested in is you learning when you would use one technique over another, uh, when you would use a sample design, how you would interpret the information that you get from a monitoring program. Now, some of these assignments uh, and some of the calculations that you have to do for the, for the various indicators are going to be a little bit tricky, and I, I encourage you to get together in groups and work on those to make sure that, that you uh, have the calculations correct and that you have the interpretations correct. Um, and, and the reason for this is because, you know, when, when you have a, a job and a career, it's, it's very rare that you're going to be just working entirely by yourself. You almost always will have other people that you'll be working with, conferring with, and able to, to have check your work for you. And I think that this is just good, uh, it's a good habit to get into. It's important though, when you go to turn in your assignments, that the work that you turn in is your own. If you work together in a group, I don't wanna see five identical assignments, okay? I, you, you, the calculations obviously are going to be uh, the same, uh, but the interpretation of those and the write-up of that information needs to be your own. 
Uh, if I see duplicate assignments, that leads to just some really uh, awkward conversations that we're going to have to have. So I'm really looking forward to this semester. And uh, uh, please let me know if you have any questions. Uh, if you're unsure of anything related to an assignment or how to write up the assignment or what you should be citing, let me know and we'll, uh, we'll figure it out together. I'm more than happy to have more than happy. I'm more than happy. You're really loud. How am I supposed to talk when I have a dog that's breathing heavily in the